Okay, I think we've uh, got enough of a community that uh, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, as usual, I really want to kick off the, uh, the Hangout with a focus on the dev update. So uh, Kelly is on vacation this week. So Chris Boscola will be presenting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do a screen share um, for my machine. So one second while I get that up on the screen here. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yep. OK. Um, I will drop the URL for this into the chat when I get. I'm in, uh, I don't have internet right now. Uh, but when I get internet, I'll drop it in chat. Um, but uh, as Greg is pulling that up, he mentioned Kelly is on a well-deserved uh, vacation uh, with her kids. So uh, I just want to take this time uh, to let everyone know, um, you know, she is uh, doing an absolute uh, rocking job. Um, and you guys, uh, this whole community um, definitely should uh, show her that appreciation. Um, I will do my best Kelly impression, but she has a far better command of details than I do. So I'm going to possibly skip over some details that, uh, but do ask me any questions if, um, if you want, and I'll try to fill it in. Um, so so people see the, uh, sorry, what was that? Uh, can people we, see the screen? That's all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I can see it. So I presume everybody else can. Um, so we're in the middle yeah. of, um, uh, we just started our sprint uh, that will end on April 15th. A um, couple of uh, issues that we're working on. We're um, fixing uh, hash set Casper test. And this is a set of tests um, that is related to uh, what's required for the cost accounting to work, to, to basically be able to be checked in. This is a blocker for getting the cost accounting checked in. Um, the cost accounting work is done, but um, it's unable, if we check it in now, it will break all of these tests. And we have uh, made the decision to keep the test infrastructure running the way it should be running. Um, and so uh, I don't want to gloss over, there's there's quite a lot of work here, but it's um, it it's not complicated work. It's just uh, refactoring a bunch of that, that uh, code that was setting up the original rev wallets and whatnot. Um, in addition to that, we are continuing work on our space. Uh, Dom and Wukash, uh, I don't know if you recall in previous updates, we had estimated about three weeks to get that uh, work done. And I, uh, the, that estimate still, still seems to be holding strong. So um, we're uh, along uh, making progress on that. Um, the, I'll, I'll touch on uh, just so there's uh, some work that went into consensus. Um, some fixes there, but as well as that, we did find um, one error that's showing up in testnet that uh, uh, one, one Kent is investigating. So that's the uh, ignorable equivocation error that, that, you're, that you're seeing on that update. Um, the one thing I do want to say is uh, testnet one is live now. We launched that. Uh, we actually launched it on Saturday and then I dropped it in uh, the Discord channel yesterday. Uh, just making sure that it was um, everything was buttoned up and ready to ready to go there. the The thing I want to say about Testnet One is um, the intention of Testnet is to have uh, public facing R chain functionality from here forward. So this is something that, um, and you can click the link if you want to learn details on how to use Testnet. But this is some something that anybody can come and deploy Rolang on Testnet. And your Rolang will interact with other people's Rolang. Um, the one thing I want to mention with this is that um, we're we are experiencing, as I said, there's the bug I mentioned on consensus, where we we will need to bounce testnet periodically to fix some of those bugs. Some of those bugs cause consensus problems that we can't recover from, so we have to bounce that. The intention, obviously, is to to, to minimize that and at some point have a testnet that is never re, never bounced. But um, I just want to give people that are using it um, and working with each other using it, I want to give you that heads up so that you know. And we will announce in Discord whenever we, when, whenever we have to reset the, the, the chain state back to zero, back to the Genesis block. Um, we'll give you that heads up just so you know you'll have to redeploy any contracts or anything that you've deployed. But, um, but just want to kind of iterate that 
reiterate that the intention of testnet is uh, is a public version so everybody can use it simultaneously and their their our chain code will inter interact with each other and the intention is to keep it up and not re not ever bounce it but that'll be after we fix a few of these bugs um, again pay attention in discord for that want to thank also the community members that have jumped on and and started using it already um, I think Ed and Yao have done that and so I uh, just appreciate uh, the enthusiasm you guys are showing towards that and, and um, getting started on that. Um, another just thing I want to highlight on this is uh, um, Artur did the wallet demo last, last week. And um, you may recall he said there was one API change he was making um, and he wanted to make it before the demo, but he didn't get that done. So that is that work has been done and checked in. And so that's the API with the rev address instead of the rev public key is what's currently uh, in testnet and going forward. Any questions with any of that? Uh, Chris, can you just post the uh, link to the update uh, in the chat when you have a chance? Yeah, I play. I will do that as soon. Uh, sorry, my laptop um, doesn't have internet. As, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm gonna jump on Wi-Fi and I'll do that. Sweet, thank you. Yep, anything else? Awesome. Oh, sorry, one more thing, Chris, uh, before we jump to the next bit of conversation. Uh, tomorrow, will you be leading the um, oh testing session for um, public? Actually, okay. thank you, thank you for asking that. That was, oh my goodness, it was on my notes and I didn't say that. Um, with, I wanted to mention with testnet being live, our intention is to transition the community testing hour to be more of an office hour session. So yes, we will be having it. Yes, I, ooh, um, I got to work out the Zoom issue. I don't have a Zoom account, so. Uh, you can um, just do it in my room or someone can volunteer a room. Christian, if you could do that, that would be really helpful. I would appreciate yeah, that. No problem. Um, and then, um, but yes, yeah, so it, we will be continuing that scheduled office hours uh, or community testing, but it's going to be more of an office hours um, for the for tomorrow's session because we have the public test net. But I do want to say that there are a few features that we're adding. For example, um, um, when we get the changes done, so we do the rock to rev transfer, we will we will very likely want to test those in our community test hangout before we push them onto testnet um, because it involves other people bringing up nodes. So, so we will um, sporadically do community testing that involves actual testing. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of more of an office hours, but we'll keep that time slot uh, open and we will. And so please show up if you have any community testing questions. And I will post in discord tomorrow um, Christian's uh, Zoom Zoom link for tomorrow's session. Is it possible to uh, uh, to become bonded with the testnet? No, not not the current testnet. Go look at the um, go go to the link that describes the testnet, and you'll see what the when that feature will become available on testnet. Exist current testnet is deploy only for participants. The nodes are, are being run by the co-op for this version for testnet one. You can still run a node uh, yep. to see it catch up in the blockchain, right? Yeah, I mean, it, basically it, you can do that, yes. Cool, uh, with that, I'll give it back to Greg. Thank you guys. Greg, you're muted. Uh, sorry about that. I was yammering away. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I really appreciate the, the update, Chris. I'm delighted by the progress that the team is making um, and uh, gearing up to, uh, to run through the hardening phase. I think we have just a little bit of feature work left, and then we, we yeah, we start hardening the hardening the network uh, 
in preparation for the launch of mainnet. Um, so um, uh, it's it, we're getting into very exciting times now. Um, in addition, uh, one of the things that we're in the midst of doing right now is making sure that uh, our flagship DAP um, has um, multiple nodes running Casper as a part of it. So Kvon is is heads down um, uh, making sure that. Um, the DAP runs on the latest version of the node, um, and so he had, a, and then he's also done some significant refactoring of RCAT, uh, and I'll talk a, a little bit about that in just a minute. Um, and once that refactoring is uh, stabilized, um, then we're going to have um, multiple nodes um, running so that, uh, uh, against uh, uh, the delivery of the audio data. Um, so this will be a proof um, that, in fact, we do have the, the full protocol all under, under pressure by a, uh, a, a, a significant DAP. Um, and um, right on the heels of that, we will be um, um, launching um, an MVP uh, with a group uh, that we've been partnering with um, that deliver, uses RCAT to deliver um, uh, the uh, digital impressions of fine art. So this proves out the um, proves out the, the the point with respect to um, the 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 idea that RCAT is in fact a generic uh, a generic substrate for digital asset man management, um, and at the same time provides a pretty significant marketing as uh, the people who are doing this are are looking to get a blockchain solution into virtually every museum in the world. Uh, so we're we're very excited about about that, uh, and the amount of work is really uh, quite tiny, uh, which which was exactly what we um, had um, intimated uh, for, and now we're proving it out. And um, the thing that's that's uh, really interesting about that measure of work is um, that we believe that that as a result, virtually any team. Uh, who wanted to could bring a digital asset um, uh, application, uh, digital asset management application to market. Um, whether it was, um, you know, photo sharing or um, uh, 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 video snippet sharing, or um, or even, you know, just chat or or other kinds of um, social exchange of digital assets. Uh, all of those could now. Use the uh, the RCAT system um, to bring a, a a minimum viable product uh, to market in really just a few weeks with the commitment of one or two engineers. So um, so that provides a, 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 a you know a, a pretty cool demonstration. Um, not only that the platform works, but that the platform um, provides a significant um, <clears throat> uh, jump start for any team that uh, that wants to bring some blockchain technology to the market. And there are there are a wide range of uh, di digital asset uh, management schemes that uh, should be considered. For example, um, we in, in a recent conversation with uh, a group in a large software. Uh, a company in Redmond, uh, we were exploring uh, digital asset management around gaming, everything from you know you know weapons and and uh, you know uh, 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 skins for players to um, uh, to to uh, even uh, in-game currency. So all of that is uh, something that's uh, very much uh, made possible uh, very quickly. Um, by the RCAT system, uh, so we're we're extremely uh, uh, excited about these these uh, new developments as well. Well, so let me stop there and check in and see if there are any questions about those updates. Going once. Going twice. Um, all right. So um, there are a, a lot of business updates, uh, a whole lot of business updates, but uh, the vast majority of them uh, I will uh, keep to the closed door session on Friday. Um, I will say that uh, I think probably a, a lot of the community has um, 
um, uh, seen the um, proposal from Reflective, nay, Counterpoint um, uh, Ventures. And uh, I have received, uh, I've basically been inundated with direct messages from the community and the response is all uniform that they, uh, they don't like the proposal at all. Um, but we'll, we'll do what we can to kind of codify that and make sure that we have a good, nice record of that. But, but so far, um, if you look at my Discord inbox um, and, and other uh, direct channels, um, the community response is very similar to the board response, which is that the, the proposal um, uh, is, uh, is not well received. Um, so uh, we can talk in more detail about that uh, in the closed door session, but I just, I did want to give people a summary um, with respect to uh, what, uh, uh, what's, uh, how, um, how, how that proposal has been res responded to uh, or the sentiment around that. Um, and then uh, on another update, uh, I would like to, um, uh, point people to the um, the latest R cast um, uh, that was done uh, in combination with Christian Williams, who's a, a researcher uh, working on the ladle algorithm and other other things related to R chain. And um, so that that sort of gives a uh, you know sort of a, a, a beginner's guide. <laughs> Uh, to what's going on with ladle and you know what uh, what some of the promises are uh, with respect to ladle and uh, what we might expect out of that um, and so I, I heartily encourage people to um, uh, take you know take a listen um, so far there's been a lot of a good reception of the latest Rcast um, um, releases and I just want to say that um, uh, this has uh, been uh, significant in terms of our discussion with uh, potential investors. They, they found these materials to be um, quite engaging and, and, and it really helps to get the R-Chain message across. Uh, so please uh, take a listen and see if you, uh, you, um, uh, you know, have anything to say there. Uh, one thing I, I would like to, um, I would like to point out is that um, uh, Christian uh, Williams and John Byes, who have been working uh, on behalf of our chain on the ladle algorithm, have a paper um, detailing a particular approach that, that we've been exploring with respect to the, the ladle semantics. Um, so that, that, uh, that paper was accepted in conference. Um, and uh, we should, uh, if we don't have it up now, uh, we'll have it up re uh, soon. We'll have a, um, uh, a, a link to the paper that was accepted. Um, it's up. It's up, Greg. It's on the blog. And as well as a video of Christian talking about the paper that I just posted this morning. Fantastic. That's, that's such good news. So what I want people to understand is the, the kind of stature in the research community of people like John Byers and Christian. Uh, John Byers is, you know, one of the most pre th this generation's preeminent mathematical physicists, as well as a highly respected category theorist. And so, to have people like that engaged on the later work is a big confirmation of the the sort of um, um, interest in the approach and uh, the validity of the approach. Um, so. Uh, so we're, we're, we're extremely happy about, about the engagement of John and his students and that whole community of, of researchers in category theory. It's, it's, it's very nice. I was, I was delighted to hear that um, some, of the, some of the detailed conversations have actually reached out to Eugenia Chang, who has contributed a few examples to the kinds of calculations that the group is doing. Eugenia is also uh, an extremely uh, well-respected uh, researcher in the area. Um, and it was, in fact, her paper on um, um, distributed laws um, uh, and uh, the Yang-Baxter equation that uh, got me thinking about the best way to express ladle in terms of distributed laws. Uh, so it, it feels, you know, it was like, I think that happened around 2007. So 
So 12 years later, we've kind of come full circle. We're, we're actually able to, to give her some, some things to think about as well. So very, very delighted to see that kind of engagement uh, from, uh, from such preeminent um, researchers. Um, uh, any questions on that? Um, uh, so people are interested in a bibliography. Uh, sure, we can we can put together a bibliography. We have uh, in the GitHub repo. There's an Archain Research bibliography where we keep papers that's um, uh, that are you know have served as as important background. Um, and then. Uh, uh, any other questions on this development? Um, okay, I will just mention, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, other other news that um, Hunt Jackson has delivered the uh, um, the tax estimate, um, the, the updated tax estimate uh, that we intend to, um, there's a few minor adjustments on that, but uh, that we intend to file with the IRS and the, uh, the, the, it's our taxes at um, uh, a roughly $478,000, which is one seventh of the defensive and conservative estimate that we had, uh, I've been looking at before. Um, so uh, much relief all, all the way around. Um, I will be speaking to the board uh, in a special meeting about torquing our fiscal year or so that, that our fiscal year um, begins um, just after the, um, or just before, uh, right around the annual general meeting, uh, which makes a lot of sense um, for our business because of the, the, the to the annual general meeting um, and uh, that will then mean that um, the tax bill is due around that time uh, rather than um, on April 15th or, or thereabouts so that will that will also play into that uh, and more on that in the closed door session so any uh, questions or comments about that Okay, uh, no, nobody wants to talk about, about the tax man. Um, so I will now open the floor up to general questions. Any questions from the community on, uh, on anything that we've talked about so far or, or anything else that's on people's minds? Um, I have a quick question. Did we need to get that reduced to zero in order to I'm not sure exactly how much I'm allowed to say on this particular call, Greg, but... Um, yeah, let's, let's push that question to the closed door session, if you don't mind. Great. Awesome, thanks. Anything else? There's a question from Nutzipper. Is a White Block still partnered with us? Yes, they are. Fantastic. Any other questions? Relationships with eco ecosystem companies, Greg. Um, I know we've had difficulty in the past through the financial relationships, but what are your plans for re-establishing links with our ecosystem partners more generally? I know you've obviously been talking about our song and uh, um, yeah, we, we have a we have a lot of initiatives that uh, can and should include the portfolio companies that are directly aimed at enterprise relationships. So for example, uh, very, re very recently, um, fish gas, um, and there's a nice uh, collaboration that could happen between one of our portfolio companies, who I won't mention right now, but probably people can figure it out quickly, um, and uh, the cooperative and British gas. So we're actively pursuing that um, and, um, and there are a number of other uh, enterprise relationships that we are developing very, very rapidly. Um, and uh, we want to get the portfolio companies involved in those relationships. Uh, and we, will, we will be reaching out to them um, as those enterprise conversations uh, get a little further down the road. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's the, I think the, the importance is 
re-establishing relationships with those ecosystem companies um, and not letting them being upset by the reflective situation. But let's talk about that maybe on the next call. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it was cooperative funds that helped those companies get set up um, or, or help those thump, uh, companies continue on the path that they had set up for themselves. So, you know, I think that, that there's a, a good basis for um, uh, a continuing relationship uh, with uh, a, a number of those companies that are still on good, good footing uh, under the, the current market circumstances. So, yeah, we're, we're quite, uh, quite eager to establish and um, develop those uh, relationships. Uh, so, yeah, very, very well observed. It's right on the... Right, right in the, the crosshairs of our aim. The other yeah. thing that I, want, I, the other thing that I want to mention though is, and again, I keep, keep trying to sort of um, uh, talk about this in broad strokes. So, 2018 was really intended in terms of our long-term strategy to be uh, the year in which we work with startups. Uh, not that we'll stop working with startups, but but we put a lot of emphasis on on helping startups. In 2019, again, according to our a five-year plan uh, it has been um, uh, really all about you know our focus has been about developing enterprise partnerships and this has a lot to do with when we reach out to the market you know first they want to see usage but then they want to see usage not by startups but they want to see usage by by established players um, and so and this this is just a message that that goes across the board from, from invest to potential business partners, they want to see who's using your stuff, um, and uh, and in general, you know, just uh, widespread usage um, is one box to check. Um, but uh, but usage by established players is another box to check, uh, and so that that's sort of why our go-to-market strategy was organized in this particular sequence. Exactly, that's great. Um, if there is something up to date on go-to-market strategy um, out there, you know, which which if you like reinforces that message and uh, uh, is something documented, which you could point you know, potential future investors supporters to, that would be great. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to document this. You know, a lot of a lot of this was you know just. Um, what's called folklore. Uh, this is not, not the best term of art, but it is the sort of standard term of art. A lot of no business knowledge that was kept in the heads of the, of the founders. Um, so, but, but, but we have, we have to slide decks and other things uh, over the last couple of years. So we can, we can get that, those kinds of materials out. Um, right. Okay. Thanks, Any Greg. other, yeah, of course. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Greg, can you touch on the, um, in terms of go to, because I think this is a good uh, inter, uh, intersection. The um, mounting and unmounting that we talked about with um, potential other blockchains, there, there was three methods of which um, potential blockchains or partners can either mount to a shard and still take benefits through a fork and all that jazz. Um, that would be one of the fastest way we can get adoption um, from established uh, projects. Um, not necessarily enterprise, like, um, IBM or otherwise, but definitely, yeah. But, uh, yeah. In integration with other chains, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So, so, so more, more generally speaking, you know, there. Uh, once you bring some software into the world, you're faced with a, an integration problem, um, and and part of that integration problem is integrating with existing software so that they can use your stuff and you can use their stuff, uh, and that kind of integration has been baked into the DNA of our chain. Um, from the very beginning, we've been thinking about enterprise integration, which is why we chose uh, JVM uh, language uh, to build the core protocol. And the reason is very, very simple. We chose the JVM language because by a factor of four, code deployed in the enterprise and in open source is written in a JVM language like Java. Um, and so if you want to, uh, so for example, today, right now, you could take a, a, a Java package and you could um, add it to um, the node um, just by including it as a part of uh, the build, and then you could poke that through into Rolang, and then that Java package would then be available uh, in a in a sandboxed way 
uh, as additional functionality for um, uh, uh, for uh, for use in smart contracts. Now, of course, there are a lot of caveats. Uh, that go along with that that have to do with what state is recorded on the blockchain, what state isn't recorded, and what the security model is, and all of those things. So all of that has to be thought through for each package that's integrated, but but I, I just want people to know that from the ground up, we have been thinking about integration with our various partners. Now, that the integration problem, of course, extends uh, not only to enterprise partners, but to other chains. Um, and when we talk about other the integration with other Games, um, that's where the sharding uh, capability comes in. So at a minimum, uh, we might think about the, the, the chains that have the most network effects, like, like Ethereum and, and, and chains like that. So the sharding solution um, uh, serves as a kind of interledger te technology for mounting an exogenous chain as if it were a shard. Uh, so that's the, that's the, the basic idea. Uh, so that means that our chain smart contracts from from the R chain perspective, it looks like you've just added another shard. What's really going on is that you've got a pair a, a pair of smart contracts <coughs> between the two chains, one on the R chain side, one on the on the exogenous chain side. That is um, that is uh, providing uh, a, an an interledger uh, you know atomic swap. But from the R chain smart contract side, it looks like the resources on the other chain are available for use. Uh, in our chain smart contracts, um, so that's, that that's great, Greg. I mean, if we could write that down, <laughs> and then maybe present that well, in an industry that, context, you know, like in use case scenarios in industry that, sectors, yeah. like for identity, and say this is the power of our chain where it can be relevant. That would be fantastic. Yeah, so that has been written down. So that was written down in the original architecture document and uh, and in subsequent uh, documents on the wiki. So so that 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 has been written down for almost two years. Um, the the additional uh, the, the additional um, uh, way of thinking about this is supporting uh, stacks that don't necessarily have network architecture and might have some interesting features, but it might be better to put them on a different stack that has, uh, for example, uh, 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 higher transaction rates and better overall security. So in that case, um, you might consider, you know, some chain that, that started up but didn't make quite the same kind of headway but still has some interesting features to offer to the market. So in that case, they could take our chain code and, uh, and um, add in their features so it, it becomes its own shard. Now, they could go all the way to the extreme where they fork the code, they add in their features, and then, um, and then they create their own staking token. So effectively, they are also an exogenous chain, and then they can, they can uh, come in uh, as in, in a, a, a mounted shard in exactly the same way uh, uh, that we have um, uh, seen before uh, with, the, with the, you know, for example, utilizing Ethereum. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's another way in which um, we fully expect to see integration, and more generally, it has been the Archain's answer to uh, forking in general. Uh, in, in general, we see forking and rejoining as a way of vastly increasing the network effects for both forks, <laughs> um, and and essentially uh, protecting the network. And as I've said many times on this call, um, the, the key idea is that the, I, the, the inspiration for that idea is what happens in, um, uh, uh, in nature, right? For example, uh, in, in beehives, which I maintain, um, the, 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 the hives fork, you know, a new queen gets established, she runs off, takes 10,000 of the, of the bees with her from the hive, uh, but then later, uh, those hives rejoin, at least at the genetic level. Um, and so when the, when the queens fly, the drones from all the surrounding hives impregnate those queens. So those, those hives are, are, are forking and joining all the time. And for join patterns, it's a very, very common in human commerce as well. So supporting that at the chain level is just a, it's a very natural thing to do. And then finally, you know, there are a range of dApps. Um, that uh, that sit above any particular core protocol, and there, you know, of course, what we want to do is we want to support 
porting those dApps into the Rolang setting. And, uh, you know, uh, that's where the, um, the IDE um, crypt effects uh, was such, a, such an important play. Is yeah, because, that, um, that's a great example, Greg, of where there's a toolkit. Obviously, available. that's a great example of where there's a toolkit available to do that. You know, everyone has, understands IDEs and the ability to to get move and to move apps onto the platform. That's great for developers. But what you've just been talking about is the ability to port chains and provide uh, you know, integration with other chains. So some form of toolkit and service around that, as well as an explanation of what you've just said you know, as an offer to them, I think would be really powerful and it'd be a great way of getting volume. Um, onto the platform quickly if you can build those relationships with with generation one and generation two blockchains which are struggling yeah 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 we're we're, we're absolutely in agreement nick uh, absolutely in agreement and, and we are you know sequencing things with the resources that we've got in order to address those things yeah, you, you're 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 absolutely right again i just want people to be aware the trading volume on combined Ethereum and Bitcoin is nowhere near the kind of vol the transaction volume that we need to see in order for there to be uh, good validator economics. Um, so, so you know, on an important step, it's nothing. It's a, literally a drop in the ocean um, by comparison to what we need to see. And so, we do need at the end of the day um, not just to support you know, each of these different layers of integration, but we do need to support um, large scale um, uh, uh, um, uh, end user dApps, right? So we need to be able to get out to millions of users to get to the kinds of volume. Lines up with the economics talk that Steve uh, and Isaac and I had uh, some, uh, some weeks back. Um, so anyway, so that kind of, uh, ho hopefully, Christian, that addresses your question. Yeah, I'll just add, um, and this is uh, to also extend on uh, Nick's point, which is um, there are literally, I mean, I, I know many projects personally that could recapitalize their markets by working uh, directly on, uh, by forking our, their code and rejoining as a shard. Um, so this, this is a very good strategy. And I also agree with you, Greg, with regards to the transaction volume, um, but you know the end user market. Um, yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one to crack crack open. Um, you, you you're definitely gonna need a few aces. Um, um, so yeah, no, you're, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. Right. So so on two markets, right? So there's the developer market, which is important. And and again, as as I've said, we believe that once we have the right marketing and PR we can almost single-handedly reinvigorate the developer interest in the blockchain space because um, with our chain, it's so easy to get to an MVP. You know, again, the, 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 the metaphor here is, a, you know, a Y Combinator funded <laughs> a, a group of, of kids living in a garage on, on ramen um, can, can get to market with something that actually works as opposed to just a white paper. Right. That's what uh, that's what the Archain platform is is already now demonstrating with with things like that and with other kinds of tools like CryptoFX and the kinds of things that Nick has mentioned. Um, but um, the uh, 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 the other markets that we need to go after are large scale um, uh, uh, end user markets where you have high transaction volume, low risk, and uh, Where you have a value prop that allows to bring them on without uh, without too much user acquisition spend. Yeah, Greg, it's just saying that in those big markets, there's usually existing players there, maybe with older blockchain tech, and it's their use case and market understanding and ecosystem knowledge that we would need uh, to partner with. So, uh, you know, I think the proposition is to go in there and look at uh, so, so, co coexisting with them, yeah, not necessarily yeah, yeah, so, competing so, so. with them. Yeah, sure. Sure. However, um, most of the most of the, for example, in the in the blockchain uh, media space, there are a lot of players, but they don't have traction, right? It's not like it's not like certainly you can't use Ethereum realistically for any kind of audio play at this juncture, 
uh, and everybody knows that. Um, all of the players who are in fact making uh, progress there have, have done so because they built their own special purpose blockchain uh, that can actually handle And, uh, and even there, they're really at the very, very beginning of their um, uh, uh, interaction with the market. Uh, so and we, we've talked personally to most of the players in, in the space. Um, so, but, but, but uh, we agree that where we, should, where we can partner, we should. There was a question in the chat about uh, partnering with a very uh, blockchain alliance groups, yes. I was actually personally invited to the kickoff of the, uh, the Ethereum Enterprise uh, uh, Alliance. Um, and uh, you know, we will continue uh, those in, uh, pursuing those engagements and developing those engagements. And in addition, um, you know, there, are, there are some other blockchain alliance groups, for example, one that is uh, uh, sponsored by a large software company, Redmond, that we will be talking to over the next few weeks. So yeah, this is all part of the part of the plan, and is yeah, absolutely uh, we're we're in agreement with with those sentiments. You know, it's better it's better to play together and cooperate <laughs> uh, wherever you can. So yeah, absolutely in agreement. All right, any other questions uh, from the community? Yeah, Greg Rudy here. Uh, I'm curious about the alliances with enterprise. Is this something that is going on concurrently with looking for investors now? And is there a timeline for doing this? Because it seems like a longer play and takes some time. And then secondly, uh, any kind of marketing effort around this, do we have a team in mind or are we going to get a team? How, or am I way ahead of it here? Uh, so so um, with respect to participating in uh, these alliances, Mostly that's been on my shoulders. Uh, hopefully I can um, put that over onto our, our COO and, and other officers um, and uh, staff as they come on board. But the main point is that we're running these horses concurrently. Um, so uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's something that you have to do. Uh, you, you have to sort of have uh, and, and you attend to them, whichever one is the hottest. <laughs> Uh, or, or is the most time sensitive. Um, uh, I, I think I'm going to have to call it there because I actually have to drive out uh, to a meeting um, with the uh, 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 um, a large software company in Redmond, and um, uh, so I, I need a little bit of time to get everything together for that meeting. Um, so with that. I'm going to jump off. I guess people can continue chatting in the channel, but I, I've got to jump off. Um, so, so uh, with that, uh, let me um, uh, uh, say goodbye and see you next week. Sounds good. All right. All right ciao.